Are you an investor that is having a hard time earning serious money on the stock market? Are you stuck, overwhelmed by the never-ending waterfall of financial news and get-rich-quick schemes? Not sure what works and what doesn't? Well, fear not. You're in the right place. Because this is the official Value Investing Boot Camp Podcast. And now, to help you skyrocket your returns, here is your host, value investing expert, Nick Krockman. Okay, guys, welcome back to episode number 16 of the Value Investing Bootcamp podcast. I'm your host, Nick Krakman. Before I get to the content, which is today about calculating the intrinsic or real value of a business, uh, which is really a cornerstone of value investing. Before we get to that, I first want to uh, thank everyone again who has been sending me their questions and their um, yeah comments about the show. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you have a comment or a question, uh, the easiest way is to send me a tweet at value sheet. Um, I will definitely answer all of them. And another way, the more old fashioned way is uh, to send me an email uh, at nick at valuespreadsheet.com. Uh, they will come through to me and I will answer them. Uh, whatever it is, just send me, send it to me and I'll get back to you. Uh, so as I said, uh, today's topic will be about calculating the intrinsic or true value of a company. So why is this important in the first place? Well, as a value investor, we try to buy companies that are cheap. And a company can only be cheap relative to its true value. So if the price, if you calculate that a company is worth, for example, uh, $100 per share, and it's currently trading at $70 per share, it is cheap. It is at least cheaper than its value. You can get um, more value for your money than when you would buy the same stock for $120, for example. Uh, so we are looking for bargains and you need to know the value in order to uh, spot a bargain, when, uh, to, to know a bargain when you see one. So how do we do this? Well, there is no simple way, actually. That's a bit of a problem. Uh, there are a lot of ways to calculate the intrinsic value, but none of them is perfect. That The reason for this is because... They're, they all depend, all of these valuation models depend on uh, several assumptions. For example, about future growth rates. Uh, growth rate plays a big role in uh, the, yeah, the calculating the, the value of a company because, of course, the, the, the more you expect a company to grow its earnings, the more valuable this company is. Uh, we will talk about growth rates and, uh, and interest rates in the upcoming episode. Um, yeah, so several ways to, to calculate a company are, for example, uh, a liquidation value analysis or a discounted cash flow analysis, but also models that use the price to earnings ratio or uh, the return on equity. Uh, there are so many models available. Uh, if you go to my website, valuespreadsheet.com, you can actually get a free ebook which explains three separate valuation models in detail uh, with with examples and formulas etc uh, this might be might be useful because of course uh, explaining all these numbers and calculations in a in a audio podcast is a bit uh, yeah difficult to follow i guess so i will explain the theory behind these valuation models um, because for example warren buffett said that the intrinsic value of a company is the value the, the the present value of all the future free cash flows that a company uh, will generate so we already discussed free cash flow in a previous episode it is all the company all the money that is left after a company paid for its um, yeah for its uh, its expenses to stay in business so, so to pay, after it has paid for its uh, rent, for its machines, for its production capacity. So all the money that is left is f called free cash flow, which is cash that can actually be taken out of the company without interfering with the, with the, with the company itself. It will still be able to f function. So 
the the way this works, uh, the the discounted cash flow model uses this free cash flow as an input, and then sort of projects this into the future, into the future. So this is obviously a guessing game because it requires you to input a growth rate. Uh, one way to f- get a growth rate is just to look at the past. Uh, a couple of years, see how much the company uh, has grown in those years, and then use that as a growth rate. Or uh, look, uh, go to finance.yahoo.com, where you can see analyst estimates uh, for future growth for the coming five years. You can use that as well. Um, and so you project these free cash flows into the future, and then discount them to the present, which is called a net present value uh, analysis. The net present value is uh, the value of uh, a dollar in the future in today's money. This sounds complicated, but it is actually quite a simple concept. Uh, If you have a dollar today, uh, it is worth more than a a dollar five years from now. The reason for this is that if you have a dollar today, you can invest that dollar and earn a certain interest rate on it. And you, so, so this dollar in five years, if you invest it, will be worth more than one dollar in five years. So that is why a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. And so we have to, when we project these cash flows, these free cash flows into the future, uh, we have to um, calculate their net present value. And this is, this is called the net present value. So what the, these future cash flows are worth today. And if you add all of these future cash flows up, you get uh, a value estimate. So you get the, uh, an estimate of the, the value of the company. Uh, this is using the discounted cash flow model. As I said, this is explained in more detail and probably easier to follow if you just go to my website, valuespreadsheet.com and download the free ebook. Um, so, but yeah, this is just uh, an explanation of, of uh, in, in short, in, in very short way to, of how the discounted cash flow model works. Uh, however, it is important to realize that because we make all of these assumptions, uh, these models don't give you a perfect answer. They, uh, sometimes they, if you use a spreadsheet, for example, you get a, an answer, a value estimate of, of, of several decimal points, but don't put too much value on that because you can't actually calculate the value of a company precisely. It is always an estimate, an educated guess based on your best assumptions. But, uh, Charlie Munger, who is Warren Buffett's business partner, he once said, it is better to be roughly right than precisely wrong. So it doesn't really matter if your um, intrinsic value estimates are way off. Uh, the best way to counter this is just use, to use several different valuation models and then compare the results of those models and then lean towards the more conservative estimates. Uh, that is really something that comes back again and again when you're a value investor that you need to be conservative in your estimates in your predictions and your analyses this is the only way to protect yourself against major losses always be conservative especially when calculating the intrinsic value so once you know this value uh, the 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 next thing you do is um, yeah simply comparing this value with the current share price and this allows you to see if the current share price is lower than the value you calculated, which means the company is currently undervalued and, and might be interesting to buy at this price. And if the price is equal to value or above the value you calculated, it is probably better to not buy this company because it's either overvalued or fairly valued. And in both cases, it means that you don't have much upside potential. So this is not an attractive investment uh, at this price, at least. So uh, this, I, I can uh, imagine that this explanation of um, this valuation model is not uh, extremely clear because it's just hard to convey these things with words alone. You need to see it in front of you, see the numbers, see the formulas and calculations. So again, 
go to my website, <laughs> download the ebook, check it out, and it's, everything should be clear. So thanks again for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode in which we will discuss interest rates, growth rates, and discount rates. Interesting topic. So I'll see you there. If you enjoyed today's show, head over to valueinvestingbootcamp.com to find out more on how you can invest like the pros, manage your own portfolio with confidence, and consistently earn mind-boggling returns on the stock market. <laughs>